All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our virtual meeting, June nineteenth. Uh, we we'll call the meeting to order. And Vicky, are you taking the notes, the minutes today? Well, I'm working on it. <laughs> yes. All right. Good going. I decided I would write them today, and but to, I'm going. I'm intending to type them, but I thought yeah. so I need to kind of get the flow. So I will Very write good. and keep up the best I can. <laughs> okay. I'll just uh, ask for any clarifications to go along then. Okay. And uh, you bet. So, uh, everyone have a chance to read the minutes of the May meeting? And if so, are there any additions or corrections? Uh, yes, I just have a word I think should be deleted. Um, old, old business number four where K Karen wrote um, the, the members of, of this, the cemetery group and she says, perhaps Daryl McCool. Daryl McCool was very much a member of that. So I, I would take out, out the word perhaps. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree with that. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay. Good. Any others? Additions or corrections? Those are a motion to accept the minutes as corrected. A motion. Okay, motion by Twyla, second by. Well, oh, there's second. Laura. All right. Who second? <laughs> I didn't hear a second yet. Oh, okay. Is it appropriate for me to second? I, I, I'll second it. Sure, Mary. Yeah. Okay. Second by Mary. So I'll take it that the meetings are approved. The minutes are approved for the May 15th meeting. And now Laura's on board too. Hi, Laura. Hi, everyone. How are how is everyone doing? Good. Fine. Good. Love your background. Well. Good. Is that a you? picture or are you outside? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's a picture. I'm I'm at my desk right now. The view is a little bit less exciting, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got to figure out how to do that. Those look pretty cool, those backgrounds. <laughs> yeah, if you go, um, if you are in Zoom, you see in the bottom left where it says stop video, don't click stop video, but the little arrow that's just to the right of that, you mm. can go to choose virtual background and you can pick okay. whatever you want in the background. That's, that's how you get it. Okay, great. Well, we've, uh, <laughs> we've said hello and I've had the minutes approved. <laughs> Apologize for the background. <laughs> um, so we're at the approving the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda for today? <laughs> I motion to approve the agenda. Okay, so Vicki moves to approve today's agenda. Second? I'll second it. Seconded by Karen. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, Can we raise our hands, Larry? <laughs> yes. Why do little trouble seeing yours, Mary? <laughs> <laughs> Show of hands. Mary's excused. Um, any public comment today? All right. I guess we'll go to the discussion items, the treasurer's reports, historic do donations account. I think Brian will handle both accounts today. Yeah, so the historic donations account actually, um, so I'll explain this here, but it's it's currently at $494.71. Um, so the reason for that big jump is we actually had one final um, check come in from one of those businesses in the uh, for that sports stable photo project. It came in after the first of the year. I think it was Flatirons Health and Rehab, but it was for $400. So that was put into that account. So it was kind of a nice little bonus here, but um, so yeah, so it's 494.71 at the moment, so. Um, Brian, was that correct um, in the minutes that it was zero last month? Uh, last month, um, last I, month. I had put z yeah. that the historic donations account had a balance of zero in May, is that true? Uh, yeah, it actually, it would have been um, $94 and 71 cents. Technically, I just remember I did not have the 
that information okay, at that time. So, because I, I, when I revise some minutes, I can put that in there then. So, it's yeah, ninety four seventy one. Yes, that's correct. Okay, yeah. I will do that. Where did the ninety four come from, Brian? Um, I, I think just miscellaneous donations since the first of the year um, that came in. Um, so I don't, I don't know at the moment, but. Um, Okay. I can get that for you if you'd like. So, and then um, our, uh, the historic account. Yeah, historic preservation account balance is four thousand eight hundred sixty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Um, we spent some money. Yeah. Uh, yes, there was. I don't have the exact trends. I think with uh, one of Katie. Olson's, uh, there was some type of expense. Mm, okay. Um, that came through over the last month. Yeah. So. Oh, I think I remember that. And I can't remember what it was, but yes, it was Katie. Katie related. Yep. I'm here, guys. Oh, there she is. Oh, Katie. Hi, Katie. Oh, good. Hi, Katie. Help me. Behind my back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for the those little eight by ten things that we did for the large sponsorship people. Great. Right. Okay. That was good timing, Katie. We're at uh, <laughs> we're at six A of the preservation account. Do we? So uh, we that expenditure took us off the five thousand dollars. So. Uh, peg there so well, welcome good to see you um okay yep. then i guess we'll go on down to the old business the debriefing um thanks to twyla for communicating with pascal at boulder county a few days ago mary and wally and i and twyla and pascal had a nice little walk and uh so look, uh, Twyla, you want to speak to some of the things we covered and yeah. decided upon? Yeah, I, I hope everyone got my couple, two or three emails <laughs> <laughs> um, with information um, in regards to the, uh, like a new signage or trail. And um, at this point, it sounds like the trail is, is kind of discouraging, but we could still um, start something and it, it apparently takes about five years. That's what they do with their management plan. <clears throat> so we could, if we had more discussion about really wanting a trail up to the foundations, we certainly can. Um, she wasn't real encouraging, but we can do that if we really, really, really want that. Uh, but she is suggesting uh, a sign that would be right in front of the foundations and the mining area that would be specifically for the mine information. Um, there is one there kind of close with the mining picture on it, but it's not directed with information for the mine specifically. So she suggested moving that somewhere else along the trail and then um, putting, a, putting signage there specifically for the mine and what foundations I think was her idea, Lisa's mine, um, to say what foundations if you could connect them to a picture and then information. So I thought it was a very nice tour. She's a lovely lady. Um, lots of information and um, easy to speak with. So I'm not quite sure how we want to start this. I've never done this before. So um, so we can talk about that. Um, and I think as, uh, the signage, we could, we could go ahead and start with that now. But my next steps, I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah, just to add a little bit to that, you know, she yeah. was encouraging about the... Uh, a trail on the south side of the uh, um, fence around the actual uh, old foundations because it's zoned agriculture and right. you can't uh, can't mix humans and 
cows, apparently. Um, so what Twyla was talking about there about a new, an additional sign is on the Mayhoffer, Mayhoffer Trail, the old railroad grade. Um, and so if you look at across uh, the, into the open space to see the foundation. So it wouldn't be real close, but she was very encouraging about that and said that she would consider this to be a fall winter pro project and she would finance the new sign uh, in uh, 2021. And we can write the sign or, she, or her people can write it. They, they, would, they would edit and fit, fit it and all that sort of thing. And so it matched the existing sign, one's on the kite route, and one, as Twyla said, shows the, uh, more of the mine camp, I think, more about the mine camp. Right. Right. So this would be uh, focus more on the mine itself. So that's, yeah, so, um, so I think we have a green, well, I don't think, we have a green light on that sign, right. but not on any uh, uh, signage, and she keeps stressing that people are not supposed to go off into the open space where the foundations are and that rangers will confront people if they do. So uh, that's why we, every year we have the uh, permit from Boulder County to take our walking tour. So it's uh, the annual exception, I guess we could call it. So so it's so open for reactions from you all and uh, Mary and Wally want to add anything since you were also there? Well, I, I just, my understanding was if, if they ever do allow a trail, which I think we should try to pursue, it isn't off the one that we all know from our annual tour, but it would be off that uh, Mayhofer, whatever, the trail along the old uh, railroad bed, sort mm -hmm. of directly into the, uh, into the mine site. So it would actually be a fairly short trail um, which might be better anyway, yeah. but um, so it, it would be, you know, like say not what we're we're used to trekking along, but just a shorter trail, and then by that interpretive sign that they're quite willing to have us do. So anyway, yeah. it, it was very valuable time. Yeah, Th thanks, Quada, for, Quada, for getting that organized. And I think that. Uh... But Mary just talked about about the short trail that would be let's see if I'm right on this that would be the five year plan would develop that yeah yeah mm -hmm. we get in on their five year plan so they can plan for it if they would to approve it right and, and she she said it might be you know it might happen sooner she didn't she didn't know she didn't hold up any great hope one way or another but it wouldn't necessarily have to wait five years before it's approved and et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it was depending on their work schedule and Money. I guess the extent of the trail. <clears throat> so. Yeah, so that's that. Do we, any questions from anybody else on that? Yeah, so it was discouraging in the sense that we can't go right directly off the um, south side of the fence and walk in there with the three or four or five or six signs. So, but encouraging in that they were willing to work with us on the other approach. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I guess apparently they're putting signs all over because of the heavy use on the trails. So they're going to be more strict about all of that in the in the future. Yeah, telling people what they can or can't do. Uh, yeah. Right. Staying on trail. Absolutely staying on trail. Um, I have a question. Um, can you guys see me or no? Just hear me. Yeah. We can see you. Okay. See you. Great. Um, so, is there a way to put a sign inside the, you know, as you're like coming down, there's like the new trail that now comes down and goes to like the gate and if you go to the left you go over where we do our walk mm -hmm. i wonder if there's a way to put a sign right there also and it almost kind of could stop people um but and then so and probably the answer is no since you guys looked at that whole area um the other question is um 
uh, well, I think it'd be really neat when we're making that sign to, to, yeah, just make it really clear what every single, that they look out and see exactly which structure, right, kind of have to relay out where everything sat because every view is kind of from the other way, I think, right? It's, we don't have a ton of old photos showing from that view. So, so that's exciting though. I'm, I'm excited um, about that. And I think we just need to make sure the sign is done really well. So it really does answer people's questions when they say, what is that foundation? You know. Well, to answer your question, the first one is, yeah, they don't want signs there because they, I think their philosophy is that it attracts people onto the site where people aren't supposed to be. So. Uh, how many? And the other one is, yeah, the only trouble is there's so much growth and you can't really see a lot of the stuff we want to point out from the, from the uh, Mayhawk yeah. Trail. So, other reactions to Katie's question? Um, is she, Katie, I don't know, have you ever been up above uh, Caribou Ranch to the uh, Blue Bluebird Mine, I think it is? I have not been quite that far up Caribou Ranch, but she said there's an interpretive sign there which has a neat little sketch that says, oh, I'm just gonna make this up, but this was the supervisor's house. This was the entrance to the mm -hmm. mine. This was, yeah, so, so there's a neat little sketch that people can look at the sign and look on to the remains of the mine structures and tell, tell what they are. So, yeah, that'd be perfect. That'd be great. Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe if they're experts at it, um, Boulder County can help with it. Or I guess we could bring, you know, caps in too to have someone do like a, some artist do a little sketch or something. Yeah, we've got to talk about having like an aerial view looking down on what uh, the foundations would have been. And then we have one kind of like that in the uh, Lost Superior book, the mine camp and stuff. So and I think that's a possibility for sure. I, I agree with Katie that it really needs to make, we need to really make sure it's clear what each foundation is, not you know, so. Yeah, but. she said the one at Caribou Ranch was an excellent example of what we might like to do, so. I might have to go see it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I said to my husband too. I said, oh, we'll have to take a drive up there. Right? <laughs> yeah. But don't you have to, do you have to walk into that or is that, can you drive into the Caribou Ranch site? I'm not sure. I would think you could drive, but. I, I think, I think it's, I think once you get there, it's a hike. And, and you first go past the ranch site and then on up to the mine site a little bit farther, which like I said, I didn't go that far, but uh, it's, it's a lovely, I, I think they closed Caribou Ranch like through the early part of summer because of nesting or breeding or something like that. But then I think come Ju July or something, it's open. Oh, okay, good, thank you. Um, I have one question. This is slightly off the subject, but do you, did she mention anything at all about whether the current owner of the mineral rights there, whether they've contacted him about whether we could landmark the industrial mine as we, you know, we looked into that several years ago and Rocky Mountain Fuel said, no, we couldn't, or they wouldn't let us because they had the mineral rights. But no new developments that? along those lines, as far as I know. Pardon? There aren't any new developments along those lines, as far as I know. I, I wondered if they had ever contacted the new owner. Okay. Well, that reminds me, uh, in a similar aside here, that... Uh, I'm talking with Pascal, and then I followed up and talked with Carol Bean, because um, the county is really concerned that they never got the report from uh, Jenna and Laura for, on their archaeology project. And so I checked with Brian, and you know we haven't either. And so Carol Bean has been following up with, uh, she's contacted uh, Jenna and Laura, and um, in an attempt to get their written report of their findings. And uh, so that's in the works because they're also supposed to give those artifacts over to Boulder County. Right, yeah, I, I remember and, that. Yeah, and they haven't done that either. So, you know, the, Carol's theory is they, 
they got a job and never finished their project. But uh, uh, this, I think one of them replied and uh, they're going to work on getting it uh, finished up. So, yeah. Okie doke. Uh, anything else on the open space signage? Should we go on to number two? Uh, I think we all were copied on the email from Jill that's pretty much saying that uh, she doesn't feel like she wants can continue uh, with her part of that project. So she will probably look, turn everything over to whomever wants to continue with it. If there's anybody out there. <laughs> well, there how much is left to do? But I understood it was the recording. She had it kind of put together, but the recording, is that not right? Right. Yeah. That's my understanding, Vicki. I sounds like it would was completed. So yeah, I mean, I told I told her I think in the email that I would help with it, but again, I haven't communicated with her, so I'm not sure where it's at, what needs done. So. Well, maybe that's what we need to do next. Is to ask her what. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll what climb. all is needed to be done? If it's just a narration, then we could we could probably handle that within within our little group here. Yeah. There's more than that, I don't know. Well, I can contact her and can you know confirm okay. where it's at. So that's great, Vicky. Why don't you follow up on that? All right. <laughs> and uh, we'll see good. what needs to be done. Great. Okay. Thank you for that correspondence. Um, there was character. just one correspondence this month, um, and that was the sympathy card that went to Phil and Vicki Kuffner on the death of Phil's mother. Yes, mm -hmm. we, we got it. Thank you. It was uh, welcome. Made, definitely <laughs> interesting circumstances with the COVID and what was mm -hmm. what to do mm -hmm. as far as the services it was really unfortunate, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. You had a limit on how many could attend? Well, they would only allow 25. Yeah. And Bonnie has a massive family, as you know, on both sides, her side and her husband, you know, the Kuffner side, but no one could attend. Yeah. <laughs> they had 25, which was basically just some of the, her children and grandchildren. So wow. it was, still, it was still nice, but it was disappointing, I think. Sure. Yeah. But it's, well, you know, we'll, we're going to do a memorial, um, maybe at the end of the summer or when things are more allowed to have. Uh, a, a service. She was Catholic, so they always do the, a large Catholic burial service. So we'll do that. So it'll it'll all be okay. <laughs> but thank you for the card. That was nice. You are welcome. You are welcome. Uh, cemetery restoration project, Brian. Yeah, don't I don't have really any significant updates since uh, last month, um, other than we've re initially reached out just recently to the sign um, sign vendor um, out of state sign vendor to see what some options. Uh, so, but I don't have any update. I'll definitely let the working group know when we're moving on that, and I anticipate some like significant further developments before the next month's meeting. So. All right. Very good. Uh, speaking of signs, that reminds me, I forgot to tell Melissa that the depot sign is now uh, faded. We found that out at uh, our walk the other day at uh, 3rd and Depot Street that the depot sign's blank. So I'll follow, I'll follow up on that. Okay, speaking of sign. I wonder, Larry, does that company give any guarantees? Sh should we try to look into that and get the town get some of the money back for those signs that have just gone to pot so quickly? Well, yeah, I, well go ahead, Brian. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, I think, yeah, that's a good question. I think some of those, um, I know Melissa uses, uh, I believe, fast signs out of Broomfield. Um, I don't, I can't speak specifically to how old that current one is, the depot one. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I want to say there's a, these new ones, there's a, a different process on, um, how the signs put together, but 
Um, Larry, that might be a good thing to bring up with Melissa because I can't really speak to in detail what the new ones look like or, or even what the warranty is on, on the old ones. But yeah, they do seem to, that sun kind of gets them pretty good sometimes, so. I think we've replaced essentially every sign we put up, we've replaced it. <laughs> Maybe one or two that haven't been, but uh, have you been over to the Founders Park sign lately, Brian? Is it still no. okay? Okay, Maybe we'll go over there this afternoon and make sure it's still okay too, because we might have more than one. Where, what, can I ask, where's the sign you're talking about that's faded? Right there at the trailheads. Uh, Mayhoff for single tree trailhead there at Third and Depot. Okay. And uh, that's where the depot was. So that's where the sign is, and our our interpretive sign is not readable. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and I think uh, what we're talking about is one reason why Brian secured this other company. Uh, better results. Now I'll follow up with Melissa to see what, see what she because I think. I think the company has replaced some of those at their expense, but I can't, I won't swear to that. It doesn't come out of our budget anyhow, that's the good news. Um, yeah, okay, so number five, the, uh, as I, I sent you guys the pictures of those completed signs, same company, <laughs> and uh, so, Brian, do you have any update on installation? Yeah, as far as installation, I don't. Um, the I know that ribbon cutting was kind of slated for late June, but really that's all dependent on um, the latest COVID uh, guidance on, you know, large gatherings or whatnot. So I confirmed we don't have a, a definitive date yet for the ribbon cutting. Um, as far as when the signs can get installed, um, you know, obviously they're in the museum right now. And I know, I can't really speak Larry to, I know the new business item artwork uh, that may coincide with, uh, you know, when and where uh, these are installed, but um, certainly they'll be installed before the ribbon cutting, so. Yeah, maybe we should, uh, I don't know, is it okay if I talk about six, uh, uh, two, six? Yeah. Yeah, um, so we've been in contact with the uh, um, Claire Dixon from the CAPS committee. She's the one I sent out the email with those um, samples of possible artwork. And, uh, you know, there was that picture frame looking thing and then the arch looking uh, um, the arch, I guess it is. And so she and I talked uh, or emailed and <clears throat> sometime you have an extra few minutes, I drive in there and uh, get out and take a look at the, <clears throat> excuse me, the way the fencing is set up. Cause I had, there's not a square corner, but I was looking, there's kind of a curved corner at the north west side. And that seemed like a place to me to put <clears throat> our two signs, you know, separated by maybe 10 or 12 feet, something like that. And so that both of them would be visible to just a casual observer. And if they wanted to, they could read the signs and then to have the view off in the background. And uh, Claire from CAPS was, she agreed that's a good spot for them. But then, you know, that some of those prospective art projects included, uh, you know, the uh, benches and, uh, landscaping and that kind of stuff, which I think is very appealing too. So uh, so I don't know if they're going to wait until the CAPS OSAC decide about the location and what they might put there, or if they'll put up these two signs of ours first. That's, I just told you about everything I know, I think. Reactions? Um, I, I love that idea. And I, I think maybe we could just email Claire and t see what her timeline is on everything, you know, um, because 
I, it wouldn't really make sense, I don't think, to put the those in without putting all the rest of it in. But um, I love that idea, though. I think it'd be so cool to have benches there and have it be more of like a an entrance, you know? So, yeah. Uh, I kind of the same feeling. I kind of hate to install those uh, interpretive signs and then have it, you know, oh, well, maybe we need to move these around or something. And so, uh, uh, and, and you know, if, with us involved, that's three commissions, three committees too. So, <laughs> uh, don't know how, you know, it could take a while for all the communication to take place. And they had that meeting last week and I didn't get much from clear about what they talked about so i don't think they, i don't think that excuse me i don't think they decided specifically on anything arts wise yeah i think the other problem though is if we wait like all summer we're missing all these great visitors right everyone's mm -hmm. out and it's a shame that our the signs would just be sitting in the basement you know so it's a hard yeah. it's a hard absolutely so, they're like a month out, then okay. But if it's like a fall project, then probably would be good to get everything up. I wonder if we could just install, I just got this idea sitting here. We could install those two signs on the fence temporarily until the art project's decided. That way they'd be there and people could see them. You know, just uh, bolt into that, uh, that fence that goes around the parking lot. <laughs> that might be a good temporary idea, Larry. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Brian, you want to do some snooping around amongst the other committees and see if anything's yeah. been decided or? Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll dig on, dig in a little bit on this, but I, yeah. my first reaction, I, I think if they're going to go up there, they'll probably, it'll probably be like a one, on, one shot install. So as far as putting them on the fence, I, I can't really, even short term, I can't see that happening, but I don't know, you know, that's my initial thought, but yeah, I'll, I'll do some digging around and see the, the best way to coordinate this and get everyone on the same page. So you think they were going to, the plan A was to put them on a, the metal stands, stanchions like the other signs are? I, you know, I'm not, I'm not positive on that. Okay. I'm not positive. It would be helpful if we knew, knew that. For sure. Thank you. Okay, anyway, that, uh, I agree. I think all of us are excited to see the history and the um, artistic welcoming flair to that as well. Uh, Number six, uh, bus shelter app update. So we have, Brian, remember is it six or eight bus shelters in total in the town? <laughs> I mean, sorry. I can look, so, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm not, I'm not positive, I'll, I can look. Uh, I'm not sure, I haven't quite thought about that in a while. That, so. That's what sticks yeah. in my mind, there might be all the, all the bus shelters in town. So whatever the total is, which I think is six or eight, two are going to have these historic um, uh, motifs. And so one is on the kite route uh, and the other one's on the mine and mine camp. And so last week I got all the uh, images scanned uh, for the kite route because I was able to go down to the railroad museum and just do it. Uh, the second one, so she's off and running and uh, she had some text that I helped her with too. And um, then the uh, other one on the mine, uh, most all the images are coming from Louisville and we're having a little problem uh, getting them, getting the original scans of the originals because uh, people aren't working at the Louisville Museum <laughs> right now. So. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be talking with Dina from the town this afternoon and see if we can find a way to uh, speed that up a little bit. So but they're coming along. I'm just really impressed with both of the uh, images, the, um, the um, prototypes that the two artists have come up with. So uh, 
That'll be pretty sharp. Questions or additions to that? So are, are they installed or they're in the process still? I guess I'm not clear. No, well, the bus shelters have been there for a while. No, they're just those okay. metal framed glass shelters. Right. And so, so the the wrap is in is none of I don't think any of them are completed. I don't know what the completion date is. So, what will happen is you know, it's that vinyl wrap stuff, okay. like put on buses and things like that. And right. so, uh, again, I don't know exactly how what the procedures are since it's not our committee. But at some point. The, those wraps that we put on those bus shelters, and uh, I imagine it'll be some grand opening or something connected with that. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to be all done simultaneously and then have one big event or what. Okay. That's coming out of CAPS, uh, Cultural and Arts right. Commission. Okay. Okay. Uh, I haven't done anything more on number seven. Um, any other old business? I guess we'll move on to the new business then. Sounds good. Sure. I kind of fell down on the job. I didn't realize till late yesterday I never got over to the museum. I was going to take a photograph. I got to thinking, we've got our $5,000, we aren't tapping into much of these current circumstances. And um, I was looking the other day at the, um, the frames that hold the screens on the windows. I think those are the ones that are deteriorating quite a bit. And also there's the frames around the window, the window openings that have some deterioration. So I propose that Brian and I take a close look and see if it's something we want to put out a uh, request form on. Uh, and so that's as far as I've gotten. <clears throat> Is all the equipment that's sitting there going to be moved soon? <laughs> it's still there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like it's closed. <laughs> well, it is, but. Yeah, but it really does give an impression that there's the museum secondary to all that equipment. Right. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, Brian, as I understand, that must be the equipment that's going, that's being used to put in that line along the Caslin. Is that, you think I'm right about that? Uh, yeah, I believe so. I'll have to look at, I know. I, I think I communicated to you a while back about that. Um, this is being an, an Excel project uh, through Public Works. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm not positive on, yeah, it has been up there a while, I agree. Um, I'm not positive on the length of that project. I can check with uh, Public Works because I know it's a little yeah. bit unsightly. So. Well, so, you know, all that that's going on on that uh, west side of McCaslin going north and south, I think. I have a feeling that that's some of the equipment that's been used for that. And it looks like a, an Excel project too, so. Yeah, well, it was nice of us to let them use that, but yeah, it's getting kind of, it's been there quite a while. Yeah, agree. <laughs> okay, so we took care of number two. I uh, checked with Brian a while ago and the museum will not be open on July 4th. And, you probably know by now there's a virtual July 4th, I guess, is going to happen. Um, okay, number four, you want to speak to that, anybody? Yeah, I was just going to, just so we're on the same page, uh, Karen and Bob were reappointed at, a June, at the June uh, board meeting, and Katie's term is officially up at the end of this month. So just so everyone's aware. So we have, so we have one opening right now or we'll have an opening when Katie's term is up? Yeah, there's a, I mean, there's officially one opening right now. And actually I, I do believe uh, we just received one application um, for the opening. So there may, um, that 
the individual, I'm not sure if they're on a board meeting yet to be interviewed. It may occur in July, um, okay. but there is actually one application, so. Okay. Well, uh, speak for a minute about Bob. I, I speak with Bob semi-regularly and I try to send him, make print out all of our, uh, some of our stuff and send to him on a regular basis. So it sounds like you're doing okay. As he says, you know, that's always a little tough for him in the mornings and um, but I think, you know, otherwise he's, they're doing all right. And I was trying to send him the, the uh, minutes. Uh, Vicki, that was something I forgot to tell you. Uh, yeah. we, we send the minutes to Bob Morgan in the mail. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, I will, when I correct the May minutes, I'll send him that copy then. Okay. <clears throat> and I've been sending him things like, uh, like the Superior Historical, uh, like the Historical Commission Corner and any other uh, communications like that that I think you'd be interested in. Do you, I can send them all together if you want, the minutes and the his, Historical Commission report or news, newsletter that you do? Uh, I think it just depend on what the timing, you know, if it's, it's convenient, that'd be good, yeah. Do you usually just print them out and send them over? Is that what you're saying? As yeah. far as the newsletter? Okay. Right. Uh, it's just not, not the town newsletter, just that one that's commission corner or any, any blasts that are relevant to that. Okay. So then the other thing I guess I'd say is a big hearty thank you to Katie for your service on the commission and our sadness that you won't be continuing with us. So thanks, Katie. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Great. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Katie. And definitely, as you know, you're more than welcome to join in on these monthly meetings um, moving forward. So, you know, we'd love to have you if you can. Thank you. Hey, I'll try. <laughs> Um, I put one thing in the other department, and I don't know if Laura or Brian have any more news on this or not, but I looked at that. As I said in my email to you, I looked on that um, agenda for the next meeting and saw that about the 102 Maple Street, and my jaw hit my chest there. That, that sounds like a substantial building with three stories and two units on every story. Is that the way I interpreted that? Yes, so Larry, I saw your email. Um, I figured I would just wait. Uh, since you sent it yesterday, I figured I'd wait till this meeting to just catch you all in person. Sure. Um, in terms of in terms of the development application, um, we do have a. If you go on superiorcolorado.gov, you see kind of the five big buttons in the middle of the screen, and one of them is development projects. It tells you everything that's under review. Um, gives you copies of the plans, all of that. Um, the challenge is that uh, anyone on the board is not permitted to discuss those development projects outside of the public hearing. So I can't speak. I can't speak to it, you know, outside of Monday's board meeting. But I would definitely encourage you to check out that page um, and see what the plans look like. And then you are more than welcome to join our meeting on Monday virtually if you'd like to make comments. So just like this on Zoom. Or you can also email townboard at superiorcolorado.gov with any of your feedback, whether that's I like it, I don't like it, um, what questions you think we should ask the developer, um, anything along those lines. Uh, we definitely we definitely welcome feedback. Yeah, because that would be in the same block as Asti Park, correct? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm adding some uh, ambiance to our meeting here with the <laughs> telephone ring, the telephone ringing and telephone talking. I got the talking telephone. That's pretty weird. Um, yeah, well, we should take a look at that because it sounds like uh, a residence, and it sounds like it take in that north uh, east corner of that block and be 
adjacent to Ashley Park and the museum. So we probably ought to educate ourselves on what it looks like and see if we have any input. As Laura just said, she just told us how to, as individuals, I guess, to uh, uh, lend an opinion about, about that uh, development. Uh, any questions or comments? Hmm. Thanks for that. Those pointers, Laura. Sure thing. Okay, let's see. Any um, other? I have, I have okay. one other thing under other. Um, I should have okay. brought this up under old business. Larry, at the last minute, a couple of days ago, I got a notice that there was a virtual meeting of the Boulder Heritage Roundtable yesterday. Hmm. Did you go yeah. to that? No, no, I didn't. I had other plans at that late date. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know they were doing virtual meetings, but apparently they are. So the next one would be July 16th then probably. Oh yeah, I got that, that email happened Thursday morning to me too. I think they just decided to do it Thursday morning. <laughs> yeah, it was Got the brainstorm and they did it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's. That's, that's actually a pretty good idea. It's too bad they didn't have it sooner. Somebody didn't have it sooner. Yeah. yeah. So Karen, you think there's a virtual roundtable meeting in July? Is that what you're? Yeah, July 16th. Okay. It would be, it's always the Thursday before our meeting. Oh, okay. Well, it's the third Thursday, let's put it that way. It depends when the first of the month is, but generally it's right before our meeting. A day before our meeting. Okay. Yeah, that was news to me too. Yeah. Well, uh, any other old? Uh, any sorry? Any other new business? Do we have any ideas when we'll be able to have uh, in-person meetings, Brian or Laura? Uh, this is going to be the normal for quite a while. Yeah, no word on that yet. Um, we haven't we haven't really discussed as a board when we would go back to in person meetings. One of the challenges that we face is that meetings must be either all virtual or all in person, meaning we can't have some people go to town hall and some people calling in from home. So one of the things that I personally, not speaking about the rest of the board, but you know, I'm really sensitive to the fact that we have, um, you know, we have some people who um, might not feel comfortable going in person. So I, I would prefer that we keep it virtual as much as possible because that way everyone can participate versus if we do it in person, then we're excluding some people who don't feel comfortable. So that's my personal preference, but would definitely welcome your feedback to share with the rest of the board. How do you feel that this worked? Um, would you like to go back to in-person or do you like the virtual? Hmm. Well, this works pretty well under the circumstances. I, I, for one thing, we're going to be finished within an hour, which uh, doesn't yeah. <laughs> in reality. So, uh, no, I, uh, yeah, I don't, I'd rather meet in person, of course. Others, what do you think? Personally, I'd like to do in person, but this works as well. Okay. Yeah, I, I would rather do in person. There aren't that many of us, so, you know, I would think it would work, but that depends on everyone's opinion, too. Sure. Yeah, it is going to have to be consistent huh, throughout, the, throughout all the town boards and committees and what have you, yeah. Karen and Wally, how do you both feel? Um, are you asking me how I feel about it? Yes. You and yes. Wally. Are, are you talking about the board meetings or our meetings? Oh, uh, your meetings. The, okay, our meetings, there aren't very many of us, so I think we could, you know, maybe distance ourselves, although I'm, I'm not <laughs> uncomfortable. I'm not comfortable going inside and being with people without masks on. Sure. 
um, even with a smaller number of people. Wally and I won't go into a restaurant yet. Mm. Um, yep. So anyway, um, my feeling is maybe not for a while yet. Okay. Katie, what is your feeling? Well, my opinion doesn't really matter anymore since I'm officially. <laughs> no, I'm always okay. counts, Katie. Always counts. Um, I'm I'm okay with either. It is it is actually nice to do the virtual a little bit, but it's nice to. I mean, obviously, prefer to be in person. Okay. Well, I mean, even if we got together, we could all wear masks. And it's not, not a. I mean, we have to wear one everywhere we go anyway. It's not fun, but. Wally, did sure. you start to say something? No, I'm just sitting here listening, but uh, <laughs> I guess I'm, it doesn't necessarily make all that much difference to me if we decide to do it in person. Then, uh, you know, I guess we'll just have to wear a, a mask, but uh, either way works for me. Well, if we met in person, we could see Mary again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if we had masks on, I don't have a problem doing it in person. I mean, I'd like to see everybody. <laughs> I wouldn't even mind an outside meeting with everybody, even if it has nothing to do with our official meeting, just a get together, but <laughs> outside somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. That'd be good. We got to <laughs> have to be consistent. The, the town have to prove it <laughs> one and that'd be everybody, huh? Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right, Laura? Yeah, so I think you could have an outside meeting that's not the regular business, but just a get together would be fine. Um, I think the meeting outside would be difficult because then we can't record the meeting, um, which is important for the official business. Well, I was kind yeah. of being facetious on the meeting <laughs> outside, but yeah, I'm, I'm talking no, about totally. a social <laughs> gathering. <laughs> Sounds good. I think a social gathering outside would be just fine. <laughs> but we'd have to have an agenda and have to post it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we adjourn, I just thought of something I meant to mention uh, way back on the industrial mine open space signage. And that is, in case you didn't know that, uh, the two signs that do exist along that trail now are pretty much the result of uh, Gladys Forshee who uh, really pushed and pushed, and I think even paid for those signs herself, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, oh. you know, so I, I did send Gladys an email thanking her for what she did there. Those years ago, um, and she worked, Gladys worked with uh, Pascal, so they, they have a long history too. Okay, thanks everybody, any other? Anything else in the new business or good of the order? Um, can I just what is the what is the plan of action for that? The the signage and stuff is is Twyla still gonna take the like? What do we do next for that? Well, did you do all that, uh, Katie? Well, I well, I didn't hear what the next okay. step was. Okay. I well, mean, I, heard I was there for a little bit, but just who's taking the lead to do the next step? Well, I can, but with some help. <laughs> I don't mind. Good. I think Twyla and I can work on that, yeah. Yeah. Anybody else is welcome, needless to say. Yeah, I'm not sure, you know, the signage and if we write, and like Pascal said, if we write it, then sometimes they added it, which she said they have some good writers. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be, I can help and do but along with someone. Yeah. I'm willing to help out and I'm sure that there are others who would too. Okay. I think what we do is try to find an appropriate visual and, um, <coughs> and then compose the images and some text and uh, run it past the Boulder County. And they'll take it from yeah. there. Yeah, when Pascal sent the email, you know, for placement of all of them, I, I thought it would be more of the foundations and pictures of that. But 
you know, she gave a good description of all of them. But to match them up with the real foundations out there, I'm not sure. I don't think that's mm -hmm. going to be possible. Huh? Um, yeah. Like she told us, it's a, she looks at it as a fall winter project and put it up, manufactured right. the sign and put them up next uh, 2021. Right. And pay for it out of her budget in 2021. Right, and she said her budget this year is pretty much gone because of COVID, but okay. Mary, want to add anything? Hmm. Did we lose Mary and Brian? <laughs> Probably not Brian. Well, everybody, good to see you, even though it has to be this remote uh, technique and uh, uh, stay in touch and Thank you. be safe. Keep your masks on and you know, hands washed. <laughs> and, uh, Katie, thanks once again. Brian, thanks for setting us up. Anything else we need to cover? Um, Vicki, I will make the two corrections to the May minutes and then I'll forward them on to you if you wanted to put those in the packet you're sending to Bob Morgan. Or do you want me to send the May minutes to him? Um, I can't. Sorry, sorry, I was muted. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, yeah. You want to start over again? <laughs> I can do it. I can send them out. I have to get Bob's address. I'm not sure if I have it, but I'll look for it. Oh, okay. When I um, email the minutes to you, I'll put his address down there. That'd be great. So then Just I'll have Just in case it. you don't have it. Yeah, for the future as well. So, okay, perfect. Okay. okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. So Karen moves to adjourn. Second? I'll second. Second by Twyla. Okay, I think we are now adjourned. So thanks, everybody. We'll be seeing you. Awesome. Right, see, you. see you guys. Bye. See you. Thanks, Bye. Yep, thanks. Bye.